We'll be bringing you a member of the Dube family and I have with me right now Mr. Langa Dube who is the grandson to the former president of the African National Congress and uh, we'll be taking you through not just the family's history but also the history of this area that is Inanda. Mr. Dube, thanks so much for coming through. Thank you Sakina and thanks to the listeners. I'm, I'm sure I'm not the first one to tell you that uh, you have the striking resemblance to your grandfather. Yeah, so they say. No, absolutely. Indeed. You know, the pictures that we've seen of him, you certainly do look like him. But, you know, we are here in Inanda and mm -hmm. we've spoken about the significance of the African National Congress uh, bringing this celebration uh, to KZN. And, of course, we spoke about the Othlange Institute and uh, the Dube family and their contribution to that. But let's start by talking about the area of Inanda and also known as Freedom Valley. And you were telling me mm -hmm. earlier about the dark spot that this was in uh, the mm -hmm. metropolitan area of Eteguini. But uh, tell us, you know, the Dube family, first and foremost, how do they come to locate themselves in Inanda? Okay, if I have to unpack on that, uh, it will take me ages and volumes and volumes. But let me just surmise to say and share this with you and the listeners to say Inanda is one of the local unique townships and why Inanda is known to be a unique township is that it boasts itself with a whole lot of socio-economic and political you know, activities that is enshrined mostly into the founding fathers hence the NC decided to come and pay homage because Inanda is one of the areas where it, it actually not only uh, distanced itself from the suffrage that our people endured during the, 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 the struggle of the past, which today still exists. But nevertheless, it is important for one to mention that the Dube family is not just a, a family out of, you know, um, that, that can be treated in isolation with the locals. Um, Inanda, uh, I'm glad you indicated that uh, Inanda has always been known and as one of the areas uh, of a to be known to be a freedom valley. You know, Isko Tisenkululego. Why was that? The reason behind that is because Inanda produced, you know, heroes and heroines. You know, um, it's not just to say some of these heroes were born uh, leaders but they were produced by the suffrage and the experience that they had to endure uh, out of what was actually happening within the confines of Deben, the province and uh, national. We all know about that. I'm not going to dwell into, in, into the, the human suffrage. But at the same time, it is important for one to, to, to make mention that uh, Inanda and its people uh, with the great leaders it produced. Here we're, we're talking of even some of the uh, international greats like your Mahatma Gandhi, who out of the suffering all the way from India, he could have settled anywhere else uh, within the local uh, townships, but he had to find a space within Inanda. And during that time, he interacted with some of the great leaders, heroes and heroines. When you talk of, uh, uh, when you look at the, the a religious journey. There's no way you cannot make mention of uh, one of the, 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 the founding fathers of the Shembe Church, which is are still attracting huge, you know, a following. Uh, when you talk of the Shembe, and uh, what is also striking, during my, my father's, uh, my, gra my great grandfather's era, while she was politically active, you know, ensuring that a black child receives you know, decent and proper education. Once she formed the Otlang Institute, there was a, a prophet as uh, forming uh, the, the Shembe Church. And not far from there, just a stone throw away from there, there was a, a Mahatma Gandhi uh, developing the ashram, you know, for the uh, emancipation and also writing, you know, and developing a, a newspaper uh, called uh, the Indian Opinion. During the same year, in 1903, right up the hill, my grandfather started the first black newspaper called Ilangalasenatal. 
So you can tell that these leaders that were produced by Inanda, they had some form of interaction and confronting some of the, the ills that still exists even up to this day. Not only those uh, leaders, but you also have some of the local heroines that are not sung today, that uh, there's very little mention of, like Umamo Petam Kize, coming right from Inanda. There's very little that's being said. I think, Sakina, at some point, we really need to take this seriously by inviting, especially the youth, to say, this is history. This is what you need to talk about. This is what you can sort of take it out to the world so that the world can see that South Africa is not only a, a country that was that emerged in 1994, but it had a long history that is attached to it. Mm. And, 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 you know, I was uh, reading up and one of the things uh, that also stood out was uh, that whole mantra that uh, many black South Africans especially have taken to that black man, you are on your own. And mm -hmm. we know popularized, of course, by uh, Stephen Bantubiko. Yeah, but yeah. this is something that's attributed uh, initially to your grandfather, who, Definitely, when yeah. he started the Othlange Institute, came mm. from that perspective that black man, you are on your own. And hence, so the need to establish this institute that produced the likes, the luminaries like uh, uh, Chief Albert Lutuli, uh, like mm. our former Deputy President and uh, many, many other um, artistic and other luminaries as well. So talk to us about that sort of, um, you know, sense of self and, 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 and uh, propelling oneself and pulling yourself up by the bootstraps. Okay, interesting. When we talk about that, in fact, this reminds me of uh, the write-up at my grandfather's uh, tombstone, which says, uh, from darkness into glorious light. Yes, it goes to prove that he was one of those men that were concerned about the development of a black child. And he saw a need to say without education, a black man and a black child will always be subjected into darkness. Hence education, I'm glad that the, the, the government through the African National Congress has prioritized education to say there's no child that needs to stay at home without having to go to school. It's a priority and it's compulsory that each and every child needs to go to school so that they can get enlightened, so that leaders, great leaders should be produced you know, through education. Because this, that is the main driving tool that will propel any country into greater heights and to be a progressive country in whatever way you would want to interpret it. And looking at the development of Inanda over the years um, in a democratic South Africa, how do you reflect on this period? One can actually reflect right from 1994 when uh, our former state president, the past Nelson Mandela, may his soul rest in peace, uh, in his first visit here at Inanda and having decided to come and cast you know, the first vote, democratic vote, right here at Inanda. And alongside that, at the back of his mind, did made mention that this is the home where he needs to come and report to the, to the ANC ancestors to say, yes, today South Africa is a free, a free country. Because we are Africans. Obviously, uh, th there is this uh, uh, norm and the understanding of saying without having to, to give credence to our past, then our present and the future c c cannot hold. And as a result, people like Nelson Mandela, he also, on his second visit, he invited uh, leadership from uh, IBM, one of the uh, computer companies. And then he said to them, guys, here is this institution that needs your assistance. So what can you provide uh, for the benefit of the Inanda youth community? Then they said, we can offer and uh, we, we can uh, uh, start an infrastructure and uh, a computer laboratory. And that was done. And it's still accessible. The youth is benefiting because now we're talking about computer age. We're living in a computer age and everything has to be driven along those lines. And indeed, the local youth is benefiting out of, out, out of such. So our leaders have done great right from uh, post-1994. And looking at your grandfather and even your great-grandfather, James Dube, and the vision that they had 
for not just uh, the people of Inanda, but, you know, for people of South Africa, black people in general, and where the African National Congress finds itself 107 years later. How would you characterize their vision compared to where the ANC finds itself today? Okay. Comparatively speaking, both these men, when we talk of my great-grandfather, uh, he was actually an ordained uh, priest. Uh, he used the church for the benefiting of the youth. They both targeted the youth. And indeed, it makes a lot of you know, social sense you know, to target the youth. Because there's no nation. If a nation does not pay its attention to its youth, then you're not going to, to, to have a thriving nation and a developing and a progressive nation if you are not paying uh, attention to such. And interestingly so, my great-grandfather, whilst he was an ordained man, a man of cloth, but at the same time he, 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 he had this uh, very interesting uh, entrepreneurial skills, which, because he was the owner, uh, he, he was a ground transport handler, and he owned uh, transport, your know, wagons and uh, even buses back then, and uh, a lot of people benefited out of that. And uh, he, he was even encouraging, you know, our government today, they're co talking about co-ops, you know, cooperatives. It, it, it's, an, it, it's something that was driven back then, you know, uh, during 1900s, out of my great grandfather's initiatives. So those are some of the things that he managed to perfect and of which those skills, and then he transferred it to his son, uh, John Langalbalele, my grandfather. And then because he also was a businessman, an entrepreneur, he was also uh, an ordained priest, he was also a politician, an author, journalist, you name it. So he was quite a multi-skilled someone with which a lot of people manage to draw lessons from. Well, Mr. Dube, thank you so much. Uh, Langa Dube was the grandson, of course, of the great Dr. J.L. Dube, first president of the African National Congress. And uh, we're going to send it back to Auckland Park from here. But, of course, the coverage by the SABC will continue of the ANC's 107th anniversary celebrations. President Cyril Ramaphosa at the Methodist Church, uh, but he will be making his way right here to where we are at the Dr. J.L. Dube Stadium in Inanda. But for now, it's back to the studio.